I've been asked a couple of times recently about rearing. I mention rearing quite often in a number of videos and it seems as though quite a few people would like to have a go but I may be frightened by the idea of killing upteen larvae. It's not always like that and the basics, if you follow them correctly, you will have a decent success rate. However, there will always be species that prove to be difficult and much can depend on where you obtain your livestock from. Wild, caught or located larva is always easiest to rear because wild larva is quite often far healthier than any larva available from an entomological livestock supplier. The problem with livestock taken from the wild, they can be parasitised or diseased, so you will quite often get losses, apparently for no reason whatsoever. So, this little video will be to help you to rear things like these. Now the little caterpillars in here are indeed emperor moth caterpillars and they're 24 hours old. These hatched overnight and I thought that I'd got about 250 eggs which is far too many eggs but that's what I was left with overnight by three female emperor moths a couple of weeks ago. Normally I would just let a female butterfly or moth lay as many eggs as I needed to ensure that you've got a decent supply and quantity to rear through. So 250 eggs, or so I thought, was slightly excessive. But it turns out that my count to those eggs was considerably conservative. To the fact of 300, there was actually 550 eggs laid from three female emperor moths overnight. So, you may well have seen the video where I took what I thought and said at the time were 250 larvae and released them. Now it seems that I released about 500 larvae. I've kept some for myself here to rear. Nick and Samantha Brownlee, who have quite taken to rearing caterpillars that they find and any other that I can tempt them with, have got the other ones. So, we'll have a closer look at these and then I'll just give you a few tips about how to keep these and they're not as difficult as you might be imagining. Now I'll quickly go over the basic equipment and tools that you need and they are basic as well. A selection of containers of various sizes. These can all be bought fairly cheaply and readily from entomological suppliers you may well be able to get containers like these specimen bottles and specimen jars you might be able to scrounge some from your chemist or your local doctors but these can be bought and these are ideal these with the screw top lids i'd especially recommend because they're more airtight than the majority of plastic containers these small rectangular ones that measure about two centimeters deep and maybe 10 centimetres across there aren't always brilliantly airtight neither is the larger rectangular one but these ones are in fact quite good and this one this square one comes in the same size as that and you can stand a number of these on top of each other quite safely the one here with the emperor moth larva in is the only one i've got to this size and i really ought to get some more because it is a nice size but i say all these can be quite easily bought over the internet the basic tools are a couple of pairs of forceps either these straight pointed ones or the ones that curl up at the end small fine paintbrush and a larger paintbrush the larger paintbrush it's soft bristled and is used for cleaning out the bottom 
of containers to get rid of the frass. Frass being the droppings that will be made and produced in great quantities by the lava that you rear. And that's all the equipment you really need. Just some tissue paper to help wipe out containers and to get rid of moisture. But the whole process is quite simple. And rearing lava can be made even more simple by having your lava on growing potted food plant. And if you are thinking of rearing some lava and you know the species that you would like, you're always best, and indeed it's perhaps a necessity, to either buy a potted food plant or get one from somewhere in the countryside, grow it on from seed or from cuttings, but in either way, have your food plants ready and have two or three plants in pots for that species because with some caterpillars, depending on the size they ultimately attain, you'll be amazed at how much a caterpillar can actually eat and they can strip a plant down within a couple of days depending on the species. Nymphalidae, for instance, like peacocks and small tortoiseshells that have gregarious larva eat vast quantities of nettle so one little spindly nettle in a pot won't last much more than a day for even young larva so before you get your larva by what, whatever means get the food plant first preferably the year beforehand and get that plant or plants established and grown on in pots now having your larva on growing food plant is by far the most successful and generally the easiest way to rear larva from egg through to adult. It's fairly fail safe and what's good about it is the fact that you don't have to do anything to it apart from keep that plant watered and that's it. But many of you will probably buy larva and not have the correct food plant already potted up beforehand. So in that case, you will need an assortment of plastic pots. You won't need too many, but whatever you do, never have too many larva. If you want to rear peacock, for example, peacocks lay very large batches of eggs and produce a lot of larva. If you wanted to take a few larva out of the wild, take about a dozen and that will be more than enough. The more larvae you have and the more that they're crowded into containers, the more likelihood you're going to get to disease and caterpillars often can get diarrhea. But whatever you do, keep the containers clean and dry. It is advisable to have a piece of tissue on the bottom that will help absorb moisture and it makes it far easier to clean out. I haven't got that in here yet but as these larvae grow they will be supplied with tissue at the bottom and tissue is a great way of keeping that condensation out and you don't want condensation you want the caterpillars in a dry clean environment good husbandry is key to rearing any larva so keep the number of larva down to around about a dozen, maybe a maximum of 20. Sometimes it might just be a single larva. And that's what I do a lot. I find a larva, don't know what it is. So in order to identify it, and just rear it through. It's quite a simple process. If you know the larval food plant that you've got the caterpillar from, or if it's fell off, then you're well away. You can identify a larva via a couple of internet sites, but Quite often, lava can vary in colorations and markings and sometimes slight differences in structures. So you may well find a, a really good match on the internet, but you can never be 100% sure in some cases. And anyway, rearing's fun. I do like rearing. It's pretty much a dying art now. Very few people seem to do it. Take a photograph of a caterpillar, put it on some app that can apparently identify everything and that's it.
not for me, that kind of thing. I like to find out myself wherever I can. And there's a lot of fun to be had and a sense of achievement in successfully getting a group of caterpillars through to adulthood because in the wild, the chances are that out of a batch of 250 peacock eggs, it'll be lucky if there's two or three that make it through to the adult enough to breed next year. So, if you've got some eggs from a supplier, what do you start them off in? Something like this. So if you've ordered some eggs from an entomological supplier, there are several on the internet. Chances are those eggs or very young larvae will arrive on food plant contained within a petri dish. A petri dish with two lots of tissue in seems to be the method or mode of postage. Either way, for eggs and for very young larvae, you don't need too large a container. Eggs, one of these containers, is more than adequate. Once those eggs hatch, divide, depending on how many eggs there are, just divide the number of larvae up into a number of containers. Dividing larvae up rather than have them all in one container is often quite a good thing because if disease breaks out in one container, chances are it won't in the other two or three. So if you have the room, you can either rear larvae separately or just several per container, whether you use something like this or one of these airtight screw top lid jars. These are great as well because you can stand food plant up in here, leave the bottom bare, that's what I tend to do and have the, if you've got a sprig or something, if it's a woody shrub, something like blackthorn or privet, leave the bottom up, just have a sprig of the food plant in, one caterpillar, that way the frass just drops to the bottom and is well away from the caterpillar so it won't contaminate the food plant and of course you can put in that bit of tissue paper at the bottom. Sometimes it's just practice and trial and error. But these I've put in one container. I put them in yesterday before I went and released all the others. And as you can see now, we have quite a bit of frass at the bottom. These are on bramble. Bramble is quite a decent plant for staying fresh. Some shrubs and plants don't keep very well at all. But that's why you need an airtight container because... Plants will do better in an airtight container. And as a general rule, don't have plants stood in a pot of water. If you have to, make sure that that top of the pot or jar is blocked with moss or tissue so that larva can't crawl down into the water. They can be a bit stupid that way, caterpillars, and will just crawl into water and promptly drown. So, these are in need of cleaning out. Cleaning out needs to be done every day or every two days, depending on the amount of frass that lava produce. So, we'll give these a clean out. So, this is why you need the forceps. Always best to avoid handling the food plant. Make sure we've not left any in there. Some tissue to wipe that out and then I'll just use the brush to ensure that all of the frass is loose. Tap that out into the bin. This container and the bramble is bone dry and this bramble here is fine just to go straight back in. Some caterpillars you have to be careful because they will drop off. Lava safely back in. And this food plant is still nice and fresh and you can see how these have been eating this food plant here. Lid back on to retain 
air retention. Now, some people worry about the amount of air in containers like these and these. And, but to be honest, you could keep a caterpillar for years in one of these without having to take the top off. Obviously, it would need food, but in terms of air, there is more than enough air in there to last a caterpillar several lifetimes. They don't use very much oxygen, oxygen, so don't worry about the amount of air. There is plenty of air in any of the containers that you will use to rear. All you need to worry about is that they're kept clean. The food plant is fresh. It will certainly need replacing every two or three days, depending on how much the caterpillar eats. And if the food plant still looks perfectly fresh and healthy, and there's still quite a bit left, then don't there's no need to change it every day. It really is quite a simple process rearing larva. Admittedly, some species can be more picky in their needs and requirements. So. Do your homework before deciding to buy that tropical hawk moth or similar species like that along those lines. But don't be frightened by rearing larva. It is surprisingly easy.